Lieutenant Governor Janice McKeon. I am so honored and thankful for the kind words from Dan, Pete, and Don, and to my husband, Jimmy, who's here. Jimmy. Uh, my sister, I believe, is here. There she is, Jen, and my niece. Um, thank you so much to all of you for being here today. Truly, thank you. It means so much to me that you have come taken time out of your busy day to come to be here and to listen. And isn't it great seeing all these beautiful American flags? Isn't it wonderful to be an American? <laughs> Earlier this year, and we've already heard from my good friend, a well-known Idaho resident by the name of Pete Colson. And Pete, thank you for your words. He spoke at our Capitol Clarity, and, and he, as he mentioned, one of the things he said was that the world is changed by our examples, not our opinions. And it's another way of saying our actions speak louder than our words. As you well know, this past year has been quite historic. If you are like me, you have asked some serious questions about some of the actions taken by our governing officials. Perhaps you've wondered, how many businesses have we lost? Why are the businesses that remain struggling to find employees? Why were our voting rights compromised? Why has due process been stripped away? Why were people arrested for singing? Why were our prayer vigils restricted? Why did our children and our grandchildren lose one year of traditional learning? Why could we go to the liquor store, but we couldn't go to church? In other words, what is happening to our state? Idahoans have witnessed serious, egregious violations over this past year. Fortunately, many of us are aware of what should have happened differently. We have also witnessed repeated rejections of opportunities to change course and to return to our constitutional Republican form of government. Yeah. Alarmingly, Idaho has been drifting away from our foundational principles. Last year, our governor declared that some of your businesses and some of your employees were not essential. This proved to be very divisive and destructive, and it created widespread unemployment. The, re the resulting anger which occurred is a response to deep hurt, and this led to depression and suicide rates increased. I am here to tell you today that every life is essential and every job is essential. God has created each of us in his image and we each have a unique place in this life. In the Lieutenant Governor's office, we worked tirelessly to help hundreds of people who had gone many weeks without unemployment benefits. I directly messaged the governor, offering my assistance in rectifying problems at the Department of Labor. He never responded to my offer of support. Over the last year, we have been tested. Many stood strong in the face of challenges. Unfortunately, some who were entrusted with positions of leadership caved to fear and compromised principles. We cannot forget the decisions that were made, the damage that was done, and the lessons we have learned from last year. That would be a failure to learn from history, and we all know where that leads. What we have seen over the past year is unacceptable. The violations of our individual rights, our state sovereignty, and our traditional conservative principles 
is intolerable. I refuse to stand by and allow these abuses to go unchallenged. That would be a disservice to our state and a violation of my sworn oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Idaho. I can't do that, and I won't do that. That, that is why I am running to be your next governor of the State of Idaho. making difficult decisions that aren't always appreciated. I'm a proud Idahoan, a devout Christian, a proven and committed conservative, a devoted wife and mother, and with your support, I will be the first woman to lead Idaho as governor. media 
sometimes even from within our own ranks. You need to know that your Lieutenant Governor has been working consistently to protect our individual rights, our state sovereignty, and our traditional conservative values. I firmly believe in these principles, and I know you believe in them too. So let me talk briefly about these three pillars of my campaign, starting with individual rights. Here in Idaho, we believe in God-given inalienable rights. I have consistently fought against raising your tax burden because we don't have a tax problem here in Idaho. We have a spending problem. As a member of JFAC, I sponsored a spending limitation on local government and worked to keep spending in line with the growth of the economy. I consistently supported legislation to protect small businesses and independent practitioners. In my campaign for lieutenant governor, I earned an A-plus rating from the NRA and an A-plus endorsement from Dick Heller. As your governor, I will continue to fight against any, any encroachment on our Second Amendment right, including, <laughs> including any infringement coming from Washington, D.C. Whether it was supporting you right to try natural, non-traditional health remedies, speaking out against putting healthy people under house arrest, sponsoring legislation to provide for the expungement of criminal records in certain cases, or writing letters of support to the U.S. Department of Justice on behalf of wrongfully incarcerated Idahoans, my strong belief in defending individual liberty has guided my actions. It still does today, even in a time when such old-fashioned notions have lost favor with coastal elites. Amen. Let me also talk about state sovereignty. As an elected official, my duty to protect Idaho's state sovereignty compelled me to vote against Common Core and work to delay the encroachment of Obamacare in Idaho. Yeah. That duty also pressed me to vote for responsible spending on the Coronavirus Financial Advisory Committee, CFAC, even when it meant being the only member to vote against questionable proposals. Yeah. Yeah. Defending our state means making difficult decisions when the federal government tries to bribe us into compliance. It means rejecting federal money when accepting it would mean we lose the right to manage our own Medicaid programs. It means shredding the COVID agreement. Because in this agreement, Idaho is mandated to grant federal access to our lands it says that we must hold the federal government harmless and we are required to comply with unreasonable federal laws and executive orders. So what shall we do? After the election, when our governor and attorney general failed to do so, your lieutenant governor, along with a number of Idaho lawmakers concerned about state sovereignty, successfully filed an amicus brief in support of every state's obligation to maintain a Republican form of government as called for in the U.S. Constitution. We will continue to support election integrity efforts that strengthen and protect our republic. And third, let me talk about traditional conservatism, which the media and elites mock and reject. I have a long history of standing up for these values. Strong families are foundational to our value system. My 100% voting pro-life voting record, my defense of traditional marriage as defined in our Constitution, and my work on implementing the Women's Informed Consent Law speak to my dedication on these issues. Also, my own family proudly supports the successful workforce re-entry of formerly incarcerated Idahoans by providing them opportunities for gainful employment within our family businesses.
As chair of the Regional Government Efficiency Committee, I worked to identify waste in state government. As a member of CFAC, worked to ensure procurement laws were followed in contracts with the Department of Education, the Department of Labor, and broadband projects across the state. Remember when we were being threatened that if we didn't change our behavior, people were going to die because our hospitals would be over capacity? Well, as a problem solver and a member of CFAC, I authored a proposal to collaborate with the private sector to address expanded healthcare capacity during COVID-19. The proposal suggested using state-of-the-art equipment that has been used across the country, including at Mayo Clinics. Quite rudely, false information was leaked from the governor's office to a reporter who used the misinformation to mock the proposal. Where's Don? Is Don? Don, you are the CEO and owner of the company with multiple presences in Idaho. And this Lieutenant Governor greatly appreciates what your business has to offer. This future Governor welcomes your manufacturing presence here in Idaho. <laughs> Included in traditional values is education. I do not support cronyism that costs Idaho's taxpayers millions of dollars. Idaho needs an education system that prepares young people to live productive lives, not one that indoctrinates Marxist sociologist ideology being proposed today by the Biden administration. Yeah. Our children should not be taught to hate America, nor to hate each other. I have assembled a task force, and we will soon begin assessing these issues. I have long been a strong supporter of internships, apprenticeship training, and trade schools. It's why I serve as board president of the Career Technical Education Foundation. In the Idaho schools, we will teach our kids how to build, design, engineer, cook, serve, compute, barber, and work as police, firefighters, nurses, doctors, electricians, and plumbers. When people earning 12 to $15 per hour are taught skills that enable them to earn between $20 and $100 an hour, we greatly improve their opportunities. This is a win-win situation for both business and the individual. Yeah. Yeah. The truth is, I am not real comfortable bragging about my accomplishments. I prefer focusing on the job at hand. But I want you to understand my record as a strong woman of action, yeah. someone who runs on my record and not from it. As I wrap up, know that I have a vision for a better and more prosperous Idaho. This Idaho is not based on fundamental transformation as some advocate, but on protecting and enhancing our individual rights, our state sovereignty, and the traditional conservative principles that have stood the test of time. It starts with getting our financial house in order. Our country is nearly $30 trillion in debt, inflation is rising quickly, and the position of the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency is at risk. We cannot solve all of our nation's financial woes here in Idaho, but we must do our part to get our fiscal house in order, even if it means weaning ourselves off the federal teeth. We must reinvigorate traditional industries at, such as agriculture, grazing, mining, and timber, but also embrace innovation and increase our manufacturing. We must consider new opportunities such as the increased demand for firearms and ammunitions. 
Idaho will lead the way towards greater energy independence at the Idaho National Laboratory, our nation's premier nuclear science and technology lab, to develop renewable energy sources and hybrid energy systems. We can do more, we can open more doors to success by removing occupational licenses and other regulations, which stand in the way of personal and business achievement. We must, we must work on civil justice reform and over-criminalization. With an incarceration rate that is higher than the national average, I will work with my colleagues in the legislature to repeal regressive laws and regulations that entangle hard-working Idahoans in the criminal justice system. Increasing, increasing opportunities for the people needs to be the, prior, the priority in Idaho. We want Idaho to be an independent and business-friendly state that attracts talent and entrepreneurs from around the globe. Throughout the last year especially, we have witnessed the danger of one politician exercising too much power and cutting out other constitutional officers and branches of government from the decision-making process. Our republic is based on cooperation and collaboration amongst constitutional officers and the three branches of government. I will make sure we restore the proper balance of power so that our republic functions according to its design. As your governor, I will continue to be open and transparent, much like what we did with my office during the Capitol Clarity Sessions. My door will remain unlocked and open to the public, and you certainly won't be required to wear a mask. Simply put, the status quo has got to go. Amen. Idahoans are tired of being ignored, shut out of the process, declared non-essential, and discriminated against by the state. Lo lobbying groups and special interests exercise too much power and influence in Boise, and that needs to change. Cronyism will have no place in a McGeehan administration. I am running for governor to restore the principles that have made Idaho great. Individual liberty, state sovereignty, and traditional conservative values. My proven experience shows that I will always defend these principles. And I believe that you are here today because you choose to defend them as well. Yeah. If those are the principles you want, then vote for me to be your governor. Yeah. Together, we will reestablish the foundational values that make Idaho great. Visit my website, JaniceForIdaho.com, to donate and learn more about ways to participate in our historic campaign. May God bless America, and may God continue to bless the people of the great state of Idaho. Yeah.